Welcome to Electronics and More. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this ultra capacitor flashlight. As my viewers know, there is nothing worse than going to use a flashlight and finding out it does not work. Then you have to bang the flashlight to get it to work or stop flickering. The batteries could be dead, the lamp could be blown out, or the batteries leaked causing the terminals to corrode, resulting in the disassembly of the flashlight to clean the corrosion with white vinegar. I wanted a flashlight that's a flashlight that I can rely on and I never have to worry about not having light. And that's why I designed this flashlight you see here. So at any one time, I will always be able to have a flashlight. And I made it with this end. This is an end I removed from a cell phone charger. Just so happens that it was only three quarters of an inch in diameter. So when I cut it off the cable that it was attached to, it slid perfectly inside this three quarter inch slip by one inch PVC reducer. The pipe that it's made from is one inch. Now the end here has been flared. You could buy it this way. The end of a 10 foot section is already flared. The only thing is it's not flared that much. Usually it's flared from my finger to the end. So what I did is I heated the section up. I have a video for that. So if yours is not this long that you see here, which is roughly two and three quarter inches, the overall length, from the top of this pipe to the bottom is six and a quarter. You can always flare this out more by following the video. Everything is screwed together, 120 degrees apart. There's three screws, and I also applied some E6000 white sealant around the bottom. This could be easily cut away with a utility knife if I have to. It's very flexible, and I could unscrew the three screws to access the interior compartment where the supercapacitors are with the circuitry for charging. Now what's good about this is I could keep it in my car, in the glove box, I can keep this in a boat, or I can even keep this in my scooter because I have an accessory socket on my scooter. So if there's a problem that I need to have a flashlight for, this more than likely will hold the charge very well. But if it doesn't, because it is a supercapacitor and they do have a high self-discharge rate compared to rechargeable batteries, it's no big deal because I could pop this in the cigarette lighter and for only five minutes of time, I will be able to have at least 35 minutes of ultra bright light coming off of this Piranha LED right here. Now there's a lot of ways you can charge a supercapacitor. Now for this project, I'm only using two. Now the ones I have are these right here. I got a great deal on these. Let me show you these. All right. These are 2.8 volts, 100 farads, made by a Korean company. And I paid only $3.99 each shipped. So I got five of these for $19.99. It's a really, really great price. So inside the flashlight, I'm using two. Now you don't have to use two for this project. You can get away with one and I'll explain later. Now there's certain ways you could charge up supercapacitors. You could charge them very quickly if you have a few of these connected in series and they're all very similar. Even though they're all, all 100 farads, they may not be exactly 100 each. One might be 105, one might be 98, and then you would have a little bit of a mismatch going on and one capacitor may charge up more than the others in that bunch when you go to charge them. So if you have a way to verify the capacitance and it's not that easy to do on such high values like this. Ideally, you would look for four or five of these that match and then put them in series. And then once you have those five together, then you could hit them directly with 12 volts from a car battery. And the current will rush in at at least seven or eight amps will be flying into these capacitors to charge them. Now for this flashlight, I can't do that. I don't want to have a whole bunch of circuitry inside of here. All I want to do is have these two capacitors charge up to around 5.4 volts. And once it charges up to 5.4 volts, what I would like to do is have this LED to be powered at a stable 3.1 or 3.2 volts. Now you could just, if you wanted, you can actually just take a resistor, connect it in series with the LED based on a 5 volt output. You would use a 75 ohm resistor 
and that would give you around 25 milliamps, which would be driving this LED fairly bright. You can go higher if you would like. So once it's charged, I didn't want to have that light gradually get dimmer and dimmer as the 5.4 volts continues to drop. So what I came up with was using a very small board which takes 1 to 5 volts DC and it puts out a regulated 5 volts. So even if these capacitors drop down to 1 volt in total, I will still be able to drive this LED at 3.1 volts at full brightness. So it doesn't make a difference that the voltage is dropping on these capacitors because that board is always going to ensure that my LED is being driven at the brightness that I want at 3.1 or 3.2 volts. So you won't see the light gradually taper off as this is losing its charge. What will happen once it drops to around 0.9 volts, it will gradually fade this bulb out and then turn off. It needs a minimum of around 0.9 volts to give you the full 5 volt output on the board. Now the, the voltage will always be 5 volts. I said you're going to see 3.1 or 3.2 continuously even as this goes down to 1 volt. But realize that the output is 5 volts from that board. So I have a 75 ohm resistor and it always gives me around 26 milliamps which maintains around 3.1, 3.15 volts on the LED even though the voltage is slowly dropping. Once it gets down to that 0.9 volts and I see this LED start to fade out, I'll know it's time to pop this back in the lighter. If I plug this in for five minutes, I'll get at least a 35 minute light source. And if I plug it in for 10 minutes, I'll have well over an hour. If I do it for 15 minutes or 20, then I'll have well over two hours. And for me, that's ideal. What I'm going to do now is show you a few still images that I took of the inside of this flashlight. And then once that's done, what I'll do is I'll show you the schematic. Now inside here, there's a fuse, you unscrew this, there's a 2 amp fuse, I won't be using anywhere near that, just an added safety feature in case of a failure inside this flashlight, which is highly unlikely, the fuse will blow. The end cap is a flat 1 inch PVC cap, switch is just your regular push on, push off, and I have 6 stainless steel screws, 120 degrees apart, so I can easily remove each end if I want to access the compartment. This should be a very trouble-free flashlight and I should get many years of use out of this flashlight. All right, here's your 12 volt power supply. This is your accessory socket or your cigarette lighter. Now once it goes in the positive, the purpose of the diode is so later on, once you remove this from the lighter, you don't have to worry about short circuiting between the positive and the negative. You could do whatever you want and nothing will happen. That's the purpose of that diode right there. The 18 ohm 3 to 4 watt resistor is used to limit the current flowing into the capacitors. Now if I make this lower what's going to happen the transistor will become very hot and I don't want that to happen because these capacitors right here are rated for between minus 40 degrees Celsius and 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. And 60 or 70 degrees Celsius is right around 150 degrees and that's about as much as you can tolerate holding your finger on without getting burned. So the heat sink on this, the way it's designed, will allow my finger to stay on it and I will not have to remove it, it will not be burned. If you start lowering this figure here, if you start lowering this resistor from 18 ohms down to 12 or 15 because you want this to charge faster, what's going to happen, your resistor is going to get very warm to hot and then you're going to make this transistor run hotter. You'll notice that I have the capacitors placed on the emitter side instead of the collector side. If I put the capacitors on the collector side, I notice that the transistor runs much hotter. 
So there's a reason why I did this, and I suggest you follow the way I did it here. So you have the 18 ohm resistor, which limits the current flowing through, and then it goes into the capacitors, into the emitter of a PNP, in this case it's a TIP42A, and then the collector goes to ground. As long as the voltage remains under 5.3 volts, you have a 4.7 volt zener, that the voltage has to rise at least to 4.7 over here to make it through to get to the base, but I needed it higher than that, so I added a 1N4001 forward biased, which adds around 0.6 volts. So you have 0.6 added to the 4.7, that makes 5.3 volts. You have the current limiting resistor here, which is a 1K. As the voltage rises to higher than 5.3 volts, it'll make it through the 4001 and the Zener. What'll happen, the base of the PNP transistor, which is much more negative than it is positive when the bank is low in voltage, it'll gradually become more positive than negative and it'll start to make the transistor turn off. As the transistor turns off, the voltage can no longer rise above that 5.4 volt setting. So if you wanted to use only one supercapacitor, a 2.7100, what you would do is you would replace this with maybe a 2.5 or a 2.7 volt Zener, you can drop the 4001, you could just have a 1K resistor flowing into a 2.5 or a 2.7, and once the voltage rises above that, it'll start to turn off, and you should cap off the voltage around 2.7 volts. If it's going too high or too low, you can adjust it with the Zener, or add a series rectifier diode, a 1N4001. If you have to add two, then you can add two. That's not a problem. So if you do it the way you see here, you won't have any heating issues with the transistor being too hot or the resistor being too hot. Once this is fully charged from the positive going into the DC to DC step up converter, goes one to five volts, you could input one volt up to five volts and then the output will be a steady five volts, a regulated five volts. The output, you have your ultra bright Piranha LED. Now I really like these Piranha LEDs. They have a very wide beam. So when you point the flashlight, you turn it on, it's very bright. I don't want to blind the camera, but the light comes out in a nice wide angle. So when I point this straight ahead at a wall, I actually light the whole wall up with a nice bright white light rather than having a narrow beam of a LED of maybe 12 degrees. So you're definitely going to want to use a Piranha LED like you see here. It's a little square with a dome on top and the LED in the center. And that is the extent of this circuit. It's extremely simple. Current is limited to maybe 150 or 180 milliamps flowing in. So if you're using two ultra capacitors in series, that would be charged to 5.4 volts. And what happens, the 0.9 is the, the lower end, the cutoff for the DC to DC converter to properly put out 5 volts DC. Using an online supercapacitor discharge calculator, it comes out to using a 50 farad capacitor because each one of these is 100. You put two together, now you have higher voltage, half the capacitance. So the 100 becomes 50. That, that will yield around 8,628 seconds of light, around 26 milliamps going to the LED. I'm driving them a little high, it's supposed to be rated at 20, I can even push it to 30, and that will be around 2 hours and 15 minutes, which is pretty darn good for a 15 or 20 minute charge. Now if you use a 2.7, only one supercapacitor, and that drains down to 0.9 volts using 100 farads, You'll get around three quarters of this output, maybe a little more, 6,873 seconds or 115 minutes almost. And that's pretty good. It's only about a half an hour shy of using the two. So if you don't want a flashlight that's this big, you can just use one capacitor and that won't be an issue if you don't mind a little less runtime. Now if you wanted to go larger, the problem is it may not fit inside this flashlight because they get a little fatter 
and a little longer, these capacitors, as the value goes higher. So if you try to 200 or 350 farad, you're going to have to use a much larger PVC pipe, and then it's not going to be good because it's not going to be small to fit in your hand nicely. It'll just be some big fat pipe, and that will not be good. Now, if you wanted to charge this flashlight extremely quickly, the other way to do that would be to use one 2.7 volt capacitor, the 100 farad, and then the rest of the space in here, you would use a PWM circuit. I have one on my channel that you can look at, and it works perfectly for charging supercapacitors, and you could supply a lot of current to them with no heat, and you can charge this very quickly. Then you could do it in under a minute. But then you have to fit the whole circuit in here, and then you also have to be able to turn that PWM circuit on and off once the supercapacitor reaches that 2.7 volt charge, which, because you're only going to be using one if you decided to throw a PWM in. And the way to do that, you would take a comparator circuit, and you would have the output going to a very small relay, handling maybe three amps, and then that relay would be connected to your PWM circuit. So once the voltage climbs, what will happen, the relay will turn off using that comparator circuit, turning off the PWM circuit. So that's another alternative if you don't want to have to wait five minutes or 15 minutes to charge this up. Just wanted to put that out there so you know. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.